The Volvo L50C is the smallest model in the loader program from Volvo wheel loaders. Of the machines, it's the only one which has a hydrostatic power transmission. With this film, we want to give you an increased understanding of the hydrostatic power transmission in the Volvo L50C. The film is divided into four parts with the following contents. Part 1. Function description of the hydrostatic drive. Part 2. Dismantling and assembling the hydrostatic pump and hydrostatic motor. Part 3. Starting after assembling. Part 4. Functional checks with pressure checks of the system. The simplest way of describing the difference between the L50 and the other Volvo wheel loaders is that on the L50, the torque converter has been replaced by a hydrostatic pump fitted on the diesel engine. There are in fact two pumps, one gear-type charge pump and one variable displacement nine-cylinder axial piston pump. The hydrostatic motor is fitted on the gearbox. It has nine cylinders and is of the bent axis type. It has a variable displacement, which is pressure controlled, but which can also be controlled electrically. The dual range power shift gearbox has two clutch shafts, one for high gear and one for low gear. We'll have a look at the position of some of the components. Here we see the hydrostatic pump with pressure checking point. The variable pump for all hydraulics and the outer gear type pump which provides the clutch pressure for the gearbox. Here's the thermostat which regulates the oil temperature. The temperature sensor is positioned in this block. The hydrostatic system oil cooler to the left also serves all other hydraulics. Here we see a hydrostatic pump of later design which has no cover on the side. The drive segment for the hydrostatic pump against the diesel engine is secured to the drive shaft with lock screws. The flexible disc transfers in its turn power between the diesel engine and the hydrostatic pump. It's fitted to the diesel engine flywheel. Here we show the attachment of the drive segment against the flexible disc. We'll now describe the function of the hydrostatic power transmission. But in this hydraulic diagram, we'll first show which components are included and their positions. The hydrostatic pump consists of two pumps, the charge pump and the axial piston pump. The pump is fitted with a charge pressure valve for limiting the charge pressure. A pressure cutoff valve for limiting the maximum working pressure is fitted to the pump and two shock valves with an anti-cavitation function for the forward and reverse gears respectively. The hydrostatic motor has variable displacement and is positioned on the gearbox. In the charge circuit of the system, we have an oil filter, and for the cooling of the circuit, there's an oil cooler. We'll now see the machine during an operating cycle. The operator engages the forward drive gear and accelerates. Before the gravel heap, he selects kick down so that the gearbox shifts down to low gear. During the filling of the bucket, the pressure in the system increases due to the increased resistance. Reverse gear is engaged and the machine reverses out of the gravel heap. Forward gear is engaged and the operator depresses the accelerator. This increases the pressure in the system, which drives the machine forward. We now see an animated version of the same sequence in the hydraulic diagram. When the engine is started, the charge pump begins to supply oil. The orange color indicates the charge pressure. 
which spreads throughout the system on both the high and low pressure sides. The green color shows the flow of cooling oil through the hydrostatic motor and then back to the tank via the cooler. The operator engages forward gear and the displacement of the hydrostatic pump changes. The high pressure, marked in red, enters the hydrostatic motor and drives the gearbox. The bucket is filled and the displacement in the hydrostatic motor changes when the pressure in the system increases. Hydrostatic downshifting is achieved. The reverse gear is engaged and the displacement changes in both the hydrostatic pump and the hydrostatic motor, causing the machine to reverse. The forward gear is engaged again and the high pressure side changes. The oil enters the hydrostatic motor which drives the gearbox, making the machine move forward. To reach maximum speed, the hydrostatic pump must be at maximum displacement and the hydrostatic motor at minimum displacement. On the hydrostatic pump, there are two solenoids, one for the forward and one for the reverse gears respectively. Checking points for high pressure forward and reverse. Checking point for charge pressure and charge pressure valve. Pressure cutoff valve for maximum working pressure in the system. The adjusting device is positioned under the security seal. Control valve and two shock valves. The brain of the system, the regulator valve, determines the extent to which the hydrostatic pump is angled and thereby also the magnitude of its displacement. The inner spool is displaceable. Here the regulator valve pressure is adjusted. The purpose of the regulator valve is to provide a speed dependent pressure to the control piston in the hydrostatic pump. The oil flow colored orange from the charge pump presses on the inner spool which is displaced to the left. The yellow oil represents a speed dependent pressure which acts on the control piston and causes a certain angling of the pump. To further increase the angling, the speed must increase. If the speed changes, the yellow oil, the control pressure, will change and thereby also the displacement and the pump flow. If the speed is lowered, the oil pressure acting on the control piston will be drained as the spool moves and opens a connection to the tank. In the hydrostatic pump, we can see the control pressure oil, yellow oil, which is supplied to the solenoid block. When the forward gear is engaged, the spool is displaced upward. The yellow speed-dependent control pressure displaces the control piston and the pump begins to supply oil. When reverse gear is engaged, the spool is displaced downward and directs the speed-dependent control pressure to the lower side of the control piston the pump changes the flow direction. The yoke, as we can see, can be angled 15 degrees to either side of the neutral position. Maximum working pressure is determined by the setting of the pressure cutoff valve. It consists of, among other parts, a shuttle valve. The position of the shuttle valve is determined by the forward or reverse gear. We'll now see how the pressure cutoff valve works when maximum working pressure is reached. The engine is started and we can see the orange charge pressure. Forward gear is engaged. Red high pressure enters and displaces the shuttle valve so that it seals against the seat. The high pressure moves on through the shuttle valve and presses on the small and large piston, which causes the yellow control pressure to be drained to tank. We now have a pressure cutoff at 425 bar or 6164 psi. The yellow control pressure is drained to tank and the pump angle reduces, but maximum working pressure is maintained. We change traveling direction by engaging reverse gear so that the shuttle valve moves down and seals against the bottom. The high pressure again acts against the small piston and the sequence is repeated. On the hydrostatic motor, we have a plug marked X1, where the pressure checking coupling for static checking of the displacement valve can be connected. The changeover pressure is adjusted here. 
solenoid for locking of hydrostatic motor for low speed function. The brake defeat valve prevents unwanted change of displacement in the hydrostatic motor during, for example, downhill operation. Its position is controlled by the control pressure for the forward and reverse gears. The spool valve provides the hydrostatic motor with further cooling when a gear is engaged. Here we can see the control piston, which is controlled by the displacement valve. The displacement valve is positioned in the housing next to the control piston. It affects the magnitude of the displacement in the hydrostatic motor. It contains, among other things, a spool, a liner, and a spring for adjusting the change of a pressure. We'll have a look at what happens in the hydrostatic motor when starting the machine. When the diesel engine is started up, there'll be charge pressure, colored yellow, at the control piston and the displacement valve. When forward gear is engaged, the high pressure, colored red, presses on the control piston and the hydrostatic motor is in its minimum displacement position. At approximately 265 bar or 3844 psi, the displacement valve changes position. The oil flow forces the control piston upward and pulls the piston drum with it. The hydrostatic motor now works at maximum displacement. A downshift has taken place in the hydrostatic motor, increasing the torque to the wheels. An electrically controlled downshift of the hydrostatic motor displacement is also possible by activating solenoid MA84. This is done by directing the oil pressure from the small piston area to the large one. A downshift is achieved at low pressure, approximately 15 bar or 217 psi. The hydrostatic motor will be at maximum displacement already at charge pressure and with the gear selector control in neutral. The various gear positions and whether the locking of the hydrostatic motor is activated or not can be seen on the operator's display unit. We'll now demonstrate how locking of the hydrostatic motor may be used. As you approach a steep uphill, stop and engage low gear. When you move off, keep the button for engine braking depressed or operate the switch on the right panel so that the hydrostatic motor lock is engaged. Good climbing properties are now available at an even traveling speed within the low speed range. A good engine braking function is now also achievable when operating downhill. As long as the operator uses the low gear and keeps the finger on the button for engine braking, the service brakes will normally not have to be used. Another advantage with the hydrostatic system is the good distribution of power between drive line and hydraulics. The speed of the diesel engine is rarely forced down during normal handling. Speed drops and the engine has to work harder when operating up a steep hill at the same time as the fully loaded bucket is raised. Another test of the fine braking properties of the hydrostatic unit is when the operator uses the engine braking function in high gear almost without having to use the service brakes. When using hydraulic attachments, the low speed properties can be further improved with the inching function. The inching function consists of a variable restriction, which, with this control, allows you to set the required control pressure for correct angling and displacement of the hydrostatic pump. This allows low machine speed and a large flow to an hydraulic attachment. The speed of the diesel engine is adjusted with the hand throttle and here we can see the inching pedal which can be used for temporarily lowering the speed which is set with the hand control. If the inching pedal is pushed right down, all control pressure will be drained and the machine will stop. 